Hi, and welcome to Live at Epifan. Every hey. Thursday at 3 p.m., we go live to give you tips, tricks, and tools that you might need for the trade. My name is Matt, and today we have George, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the best audio practices for Zoom. We're going to be looking at things like different possible setups that you might want to have, so the kind of gear you might want to use, some uh, Zoom settings you might want to be considering when you're using your setup, uh, what happens if you need to get external audio into your system and you're not using something embedded, and finally, what to do if you've got multiple video, so sorry, audio sources at, let's say, a conference. How yeah, doing, it should George? be a fun show. I'm great, Matt. Nice to see you. Nice to hear you. Good to see you. Um, hearing you too. I dare say you sound pretty good, and uh, it has taken us a little while to get here mm -hmm. uh, with all of our various different audio setups that we've been working through over the past, boy, I was going to say weeks, months, Matt. Months, months. Yeah. It, it never ends, honestly. So it really does. It, well, let's hope it does. But um, in the meantime, we can at least give some tips on how to get like the best sounding audio you can muster out of Zoom. And mm -hmm. for us here, that has meant bringing in different equipment and trying out different room settings and diving deep into the advanced settings in Zoom. And I think that's going to be the most interesting part of the show today. We're going to show you how to take advantage of Zoom and use the tools that Zoom gives you because they're pretty powerful. Um, and we have some fun experiments to do it along that note. Now, we also know that not everyone will necessarily have access to different pieces of equipment. It might not necessarily be readily available online that you can order, uh, but we're gonna give you a couple of different scenarios where you can kind of leverage the best of the world that you have. Now, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them into the chat box on YouTube or on Facebook, and we will try to get to those as uh, quickly and as timely as possible. Yeah, um, so let's jump into the First, let's talk about, Matt, the setups. So there's a few pretty basic ways to get audio into a Zoom call. So what's the most basic way someone can get audio into Zoom? So the most basic way, and let's say you have no devices whatsoever, chances are you're probably using a laptop or a phone or a tablet. Now, all of those devices will typically have a built-in microphone. So the advantages to that is, of course, you don't have to spend any extra money. You have it available. It's really easy to use because it's already automatically selected. Um, it's consistent sound no matter what. It's always going to serve you well, unless, of course, if you've broken the device. Uh, and there's, of course, no setup cost. There is yeah. a little bit of a downside to that, though. Yeah, the, the only real downside that I can see is that it's far away from your mouth. And any kind of audio, like any kind of low-cost audio microphone isn't going to do a good job when it's far away from your, from your mouth. So that brings us to like the next level up right. when you do what you do some days, which is your dork, uh, dork ears that you put on. I would like to go and, fly a Cessna now. <laughs> and they're great for audio though, right? Like when you put those on, it's, it's clear as day when you have it because you're, you're, the mic is right beside your mouth. Absolutely. And you never have to worry, if you've got like a set of headphones on as well, you never have to worry about uh, audio feedback, right? Where the sound from, let's say, a set of speakers is coming back into your microphone, causing this endless loop of hi over a thousand times getting louder and louder. So some definite control and benefit to having a set of headphones. But of course, as you mentioned, dorky. Yeah, they, they might be my favorite solution. The, the only thing, yeah, they, they might be my favorite because I don't always want to present with uh, th them on my head because I just don't like the way it looks all the time. Of but course. for sound quality, because it's right beside your mouth, they're, they're great. And you can move around. I could walk to the back of this room with those on and not worry about getting away from this mic that I'm on. So it gives you that sense of mobility, which I really like. Of course. And um, I mean, we're using... And that leads us earbuds. to like... Earbuds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we both got some earbuds in so we don't have any feedback issues. Um, and you and I are both using external mics right now. So yes. I'll tell you what I'm using. I'm using a, a USB microphone that I bought on Amazon when this whole thing started. It's an, I don't know, some no name brand. I literally don't know the name of it, but it works and it's fine and it was available. Um, and it allows me to, it's on this armature podcaster style thing. So it allows me to move it right where I need it in front of my mouth. So that's been great. Now, of course. Uh, and yeah, I know you don't have a, you, sorry, God. You don't have a USB mic. No, so I use something a you little have bit more a, robust. So uh, tell me why, Tell me about your mic setup and, and why it's more robust. Sure. So uh, one of the things you can always consider, just like you would use a USB webcam, you can always consider a USB 
audio capture solution or an audio interface. So I'm using an older device from a company called M Audio. Um, and it's just uh, a device that allows you to connect um, XLR type microphones. So I'm using an SM57, which essentially is one of those standard talking microphones without the uh, the head that's, that's twisted on it. Um, but essentially it connects sure. to your computer using USB. Um, as you can see here on the screen, we're, uh, we're showcasing uh, a Focusrite Scarlett. Uh, Focusrite is the most popular brand that you'll see on the market right now for USB type audio capture devices. Some great benefits to this is you just have more yeah. control over your sound. So that there it is now. Yeah, I, I you have one of these when I want to attach a, a non-USB mic. Mm -hmm. And But for the pur purposes of Zoom calls, for most people, this is probably overkill. It, it's a way to use, maybe you already have mics that are not USB and you want to get them into your system. That's great. But um, for a Zoom call, I, I think a USB mic is, is great. Like our colleague George and Greg, they both have the Blue Yeti mics. Uh, I think I have a picture of them here. Yep. And these things are wonderful because you can put them on your desk and they don't have to be right up by your face as well. So you got a bit of mobility, you can move mm -hmm. around um, and they sound great. So uh, I'd recommend getting a Blue Yeti or something like that um, if you want to sound something a little bit better than you would through a system mic or, or a, a small earphone mic. Of course. And if you're going to be using something like an audio interface, chances are you're probably, uh, you know, either more interested in getting audio from either a mixer or a soundboard, or maybe you're a musician of sorts. Um, I don't know about you, George, but periodically I like to play instruments and uh, what's becoming more and more popular for Zoom and for other conferencing type tools is to have like a jam session online. But you have to have a way of being able to get that guitar or that bass or those drums or that keyboard into your computer to be used as a source within Zoom. So that's where you kind of get that little extra benefit. Yeah, that's right. We have a show coming up on that for musicians who want to learn how to use conferencing tools. Uh, it's There's some other issues you have to consider like latency, which we'll get into later. Uh, we, my band has a hard enough time staying on track when we're in the same room staring at each <laughs> other. So doing it over a conferencing tool is a very unique challenge. Digital metronomes. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people, there's some other tricks that uh, Dave was telling us about, our colleague, where you kind of loop on top of each other. So everybody's at a set delay. So you're actually playing, ah. I play, and then five seconds later, you start playing, that kind of thing. So um, there's some tricks, but anyway, we'll get into that later. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so this is where I think we get to the fun stuff. So, oh, yes. People have been playing around with their Zoom settings. They know that there's a few things that they can look at in Zoom. Maybe you can show us what they do. Sure. So what's uh, that in your hand? Put put it down. Is, put the, put that down. It's a hair dryer. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So oh, sorry, so sorry. Zoom has a, a few sets of different features. First of all, it has a, a setting for stereo. So if you've got two independent video uh, audio sources that you'd like to use, left and right can become prevalent. Um, typically you might use this if you're using a mixer going into a sound card, or maybe if you're going to have music that's being used, um, as a video, as an audio source. Or what about two speakers? You know, if I've got my twin brother beside me here you, and he you has can... his mic and I have my mic that, that would work, right? It would. Yeah. I mean, you know, you'd have the distinct person one in each ear and that can get a little bit weird if someone's wearing headphones, but... <laughs> that's true, <laughs> but it is, it is one you of the sound the same. So it'd be that. fine. Yeah. Um, but not only that, but we also have some more advanced settings as well with uh, with Zoom. So things like being able to do noise suppression in the background, uh, something that's like a persistent noise. So typically you might be, maybe it's uh, a loud room, someone's vacuuming in the background. You could be at a factory trying to, to you know get that information provided to your colleague or to your, your boss. Um, or maybe you have something like a hairdryer going in the background because somebody just wants to get ready and, and look nice. Not like they can really go anywhere or do anything, but you know. Um, and then of course we have things like <laughs> echo, echo cancellation as well and echo suppression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn off all of those settings, which is called uh, original sound. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. You're going to notice a difference just in the quality that comes out. So even with the, so I've just turned it on or turned on the original sound now. So I've gotten rid of all the suppression, all the other options. So I can hear, but I can hear noises coming out right now. I can hear like a tone, a, a, a room tone, I guess you'd call yeah. that, right? So what you're also getting is also the uh, the sounds that are just coming out of the laptop. So I have a laptop fan. So what I'm going to just, 
give everyone just a heads up is just to turn down the volume for a split second. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to continue talking. And then I'm going to turn off the original sound so that we're reintroducing the suppression settings and you're going to notice an interesting change. So I'm going to turn this on right now. So I've turned on this hair dryer, which obviously makes its own set of noise and is quite annoying and droning dr drowns out over time. So I'm going to turn off the original sound settings. And then after a few moments, you should start to see that the hair dryer sound disappears almost completely, if not completely. Now, this does mean that there is an effect on the voice, but at least you're able to get a little bit more consistency out of that sound. That's amazing. It, it really shows how powerful uh, just adding a noise gate uh, and the suppression tools that Zoom offers to get rid of. And you're, you're demonstrating a pretty extreme example, but oh, yeah, for, the, yes. for most of us, we have something in the room that's making a hum here. Like I have my computer, my Mac, which seems to suddenly go crazy and make a lot of volume uh, with the fan every now and again. Mm -hmm and uh, other just ambient noises to the room. Those are the things that Zoom is really good at getting rid of. Now, now you tested some of the, do you have a, are you able to share that screen, Matt? Did we, we didn't really plan for that, but uh, no, are you, can you screen share us the uh, system settings? I might be able to do that. Uh, and you know, I, I apologize to our producer. Uh, we, we didn't really go over some of these settings, so we're gonna oh, see some. This may or may not work. And if it doesn't, I will just turn it off immediately. Um, and he can, you can blame me for ad hoc, uh, actually, uh, you know what we can't, because I, Matt I can't, and I, I can't share settings while someone else is sharing. So we're going to have to, uh, upload that at a later date. Maybe I'll create a blog post about this so we get a little bit more understanding there. Good idea. Yeah. Anyway, it's pretty basic. You go into your system settings and then under audio, there's an advanced button, right? Yeah. Usually along the bottom there. Uh, and just in the general audio settings, you have the ability to select which audio source you want to use and you can specify that. So as an example, when I'm using my Cessna headset, as we'll call it, um, I can have it so that all of my general sound on my computer is coming straight out of my normal speakers, but then only Zoom calls, Zoom conferences go to the headphones. So you can select where that sound is going to go, which microphone sources you want to use. So if I wanted to change from this microphone that I'm using right now to the headset, I could certainly do that as well. And you can even have notifications for a Zoom application appear in a number of different places. So you've got a lot of configurability available for that. For sure. Um, and then, so I think we're ready to start talking about the bringing other sources into Zoom, right? So yeah. this is something that I've thought was a lot of fun to figure out. So I was planning for this episode where we're gonna have to bring in uh, some music into Zoom. Mm -hmm. So. Let me just put on a little background music for us now so we can sort of feel the vibe here. Right. So this is by Ashad Galstian, who is a friend of the show. And um, they were willing to let us play a bit of their music. So I'm going to fire it. So can you hear that, Matt? I can, How's that yeah. Sound? Nice, okay. nice little uh, background tone. Great. And now... A little low. Um, it's a little low. I might have to go into my Zoom settings and turn on... Um, Turn on original sound. Maybe I should do that here. All right. Because I'm going to stop screen sharing and turn on original sound and tell me how that sounds. Because I don't want it to think that background music is some kind of noise. No. So, so as I can tell is that you've gotten quieter um, and there's a little bit of general noise or hiss just from the room itself that has come into play. But I can still hear the music um, and I guess we're not bringing that music in through a normal method. This isn't coming through uh, a mixer or through a different, you know, microphone connected somewhere or a, a you know, a cell phone that has an, R an, R an RCA port into your computer. So how are we doing this? So um, there's a couple of ways you can bring an external sound. The, the most obvious way is to use some kind of external solution like a, a preamp and or one of those, like the focus right we showed earlier, mm -hmm. uh, some some way to add multiple audio sources into some kind of external uh, UI card, like a, a mixer, and then mix those sounds and bring that in as your your audio source for Zoom. Because Zoom will only let you select one audio source. Correct, yeah. Uh, one audio input. However, you can trick Zoom a little bit by creating a virtual uh, audio input. So that's what I've done today. And I will show you how I did that. 
first off, I bought a tool called Loopback. I'm going to share my screen so I can show you what that looks like. So we, had an, we had an interesting, fun time uh, yesterday, actually, just playing around a lot with these settings. So if you guys have the option to even just get the trial for, for Loopback, and you are a user of something like GarageBand or Pro Tools or uh, Ableton, any of these different software applications, you can basically leverage. That's right. So I've got Loopback uh, running right now. I'm, I'm sharing it, Cameron. Maybe you can show it to the to the crowd here to see what we're looking at. It's basically a tool that lets you mix different application audio sounds on your computer. So you could mix, in my case, I'm just using GarageBand, but mm -hmm. I want to be able to present GarageBand as an audio input to Zoom. So maybe you just want to be able to play a song from iTunes um, and you want to be able to play that on Zoom. You could mix iTunes plus your mic source and whatever else you wanted and actually adjust those levels to where you like them and then present mm -hmm. that as an audio input. Right. So it's, it's a pretty helpful little utility. Uh, they make something similar for Windows as well. Um, let me see if I have that name. Uh, the VB, VB Audio Virtual Apps. So that's vbaudio.com and you can get some kind of a utility there. I haven't, I haven't tried it, but uh, allegedly it works. Right. Now, if you've got um, the benefit of being able to use something like GarageBand, you can also, you know, kind of trick people and fool around a little bit. And you've got a couple of settings that you can kind of make your life a little right. easier. Like, because GarageBand offers so many uh, tools, like you said, you can have a lot of fun with it. And not only can you manipulate your voice like I'm doing right now, but you can also, uh, I can be playing music to you like a full on whatever I want. Really, I have complete, complete capability to do any of this stuff. So. Uh, um, loads of fun. And I highly recommend doing this for your next call, next very important Zoom call where you want to make an impact uh, and you want a little, uh, little emphasis, you know, you can have some fun with it. So uh, that's kind of our fun today. I'll turn that off because it's probably irritating as all could be. Uh, but it's, what I've also added th <laughs> through GarageBand is it is fun, yeah. Is a compressor and an EQ. So mm -hmm. if you just want to give your voice a little bit of juice, like maybe you want to add some. So I can just play with this now. A little bit of ambiance. You want to get some room sound oh, as though yeah. you're in a bigger place. Uh, you could do that. Um, or I can turn all of this off and you can hear what the, the dry audio sounds like. So this is just, just this mic sound right now with no right. effect whatsoever. But instead, I chose to add a compressor and an EQ to it. Now, compressors are uh, always nice to have in general because it'll make the quiet part with parts a little bit loud and the loud parts a little bit quieter. So it just kind of makes everything a little bit more uniform, which is typically what you're going to want to have during a, a call. That's right. I'll show you what this whole interface looks like. So GarageBand is a free program for Macs. Um, and um, Windows would have many similar programs, I'm sure. But to quickly just add a couple of audio inputs and do what you want with them. Um, Oh, it looks like we have some comments, Matt. I don't know. Have you been paying attention to the YouTube uh, I've been, feed here? I've, I've been reading through a few of them here. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are talking about, uh, we've got, you know, looking for options to get classical musicians to teach and play together. So, um, you know, Thompson Media Productions, you know, being able to get all of your audio within a specific mixer and getting it into a, a, a sound card is a, a great way of doing that, of being able to get external audio. Um, if you've got some limitations, you know, room microphones with a set of headphones on with uh, maybe a USB microphone, uh, like something like a Blue Yeti, could certainly help. It'll definitely give some presence to uh, your classical players. However, mm -hmm. a little bit less control over your environment. So it's just something to be mindful of there. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, add them to the comments. Uh... Uh, and we'll try to answer those. And if you have ideas for upcoming live shows, we're really looking for new things to talk about. Um, there's a lot of people looking for video solutions right now. So um, there's a couple of other ways, Matt, to bring in audio into your uh, live, to your conferencing. Sorry, I'm so used to saying live streaming to your conferencing. <laughs> and this is one you brought out. You could use a capture card and you could, uh, bring yeah. in your audio embedded over the video, right? Yeah. So if you've got like a, like a, camcorder or if you've got a, a prosumer or a professional camera uh, most of those will typically have a 3.5 millimeter or even an xlr input for a an analog microphone and so if you want to make sure that your video and audio is in sync you can adjust those settings on the camera itself and then just simply go hdmi out into uh, one of these little guys and all your video and audio is just your video source I kind of like that solution. It's certainly tidy and there's less room for confusion about where your audio is and where your video is coming from. Mm -hmm. It also ensures um, that there's less, uh, less points of possible failure. It, it reduces the number of possible pain points. That's right. 
Um, there's another kind of a hack you could do if you wanted to bring, uh, let's say, music into your broadcast is you could share your screen and play it through that application. This is true. So if I shared my browser right now, which has this very live stream running on it, I could in fact play it back through that browser and bring it back into this horrible loop back into the show. Uh, so I won't do that. Now, something to be mindful, if you are sharing your screen, you'll get the audio at the appropriate rate, like it's gonna sound okay, but just be mindful that your video uh, is not gonna be full frames in Zoom. You know, it's you might stink. get 20 to 25 frames per second. You won't, you won't get the 30 or 60 that you're necessarily used to seeing. Yeah, right, okay. Um, so let's help these people out, Matt. There's some pretty basic troubleshooting issues we should talk about with Zoom. Maybe. The most obvious one that, that I run into is I'm on a Zoom call with uh, colleagues and I can hear my own voice coming back at me through somebody else's Zoom. And I look accusingly at each window uh, <laughs> trying to see which one and I, I'd end up blaming all of them. But usually there's only one person who has something wrong. So can you tell us what's going on there? So what's happening there is just essentially a, f a feedback loop or an echo that's coming into play. Um, essentially, it's someone's speakers are playing that audio back into that microphone, and then you're getting this basically double voice or this, this simultaneous feedback. Um, quick ways to fix that. If the person is not able to put on headphones or they aren't able to lower their volume so the microphone doesn't pick it up, mute the microphone unless you actually need to uh, contribute to that conversation. That eliminates that echo and it makes it a lot less distracting for that person mm. who's trying to speak, present, sing, or really contribute any sort of information. Yeah. I, I also see it when people are uh, they're doing their video on one device, mm -hmm. but they're using their phone to call in on another device. Yeah. And so you kind of hear the audio twice or, or and that kind of thing. So having two devices call into a Zoom call is usually kind of a disaster. But yeah, sometimes it's a workaround that you need to do because you're not getting the audio you wanted out of the first device. And something to be mindful of for things like uh, smartphones, cell phones, uh, the microphones tend to be very sensitive and to pick up a lot more of that background noise, even though they typically will filter out information. Um, on conferencing type applications, I see it a lot more that the sensitivity is really turned up. So even if you've got uh, two people that are jumping in on that call, if they're on the same floor within, I'd say about 20 feet of each other, you're still going to get that loop feedback. And I've seen this time and time again with a number of different people. So just be mindful right. of if, you know, if, if you're going to be two people within the same room or environment, maybe try to have it down to just one person or just make sure that your audio is muted from the get-go. Okay. So let me throw some other troubleshooting questions at you. They're all pretty basic, okay. but uh, so I've got no audio. What, what do I do? Typically, I'd say the normal place to start is start at the source, right? Making sure that there's nothing wrong with the actual microphone itself, making sure that your connection is okay. So whether you're using a USB microphone or an XLR or the, the built-in system itself, um, you know, that, that time and time again, of have you tried turning it off and back on again, is very important. So double check all of your connections, test your cables, wiggle them around a little bit, see if you get any sort of sound that comes out of it. Uh, if you have the ability to replace and swap out the cables, try that. If everything looks good from a hardware perspective and from the actual device perspective, start double checking your settings. So go into Zoom, double check to see what your audio settings are currently set to. If everything seems to be there and, and correct, uh, double check in your computer settings. So if you're on a Mac, double check your system level settings for audio. And then if you're on Windows, do the same. Theoretically, you'll find that problem somewhere along that chain. Now, if you've got everything set up and everything seems okay and you're still not getting audio, reboot the system. If you're still not getting audio, chances are it's the, the audio source that's probably the problem. Okay, I have more for you. Okay. Uh, the, the audio is boomy, so I can hear this kind of noisy sounding audio. Hmm. Well, it's tough to say. So boominess can happen in a few different ways. It can happen if the person is sometimes too close to a microphone. Um, if there's a lot of reflections in a room, so having control of your environment is very important. Um, I have a green screen behind me. I know it may look like a, a beautiful, well-tailored room, but it's, I promise you it's a mess behind there. Uh, you, the last thing you'd want to be is in somewhere that has a lot of reflective services. So if you're in an office that's all glass walls and all windows, you're going to have a lot of reflections. And all of that is going to create a lot of extra noise and a lot of extra boom. Uh, it's going to be hard to escape. So the more control you have over your environment, carpeted floors, fabric behind you, 
uh, artwork on the walls will reduce some of those reflections, making it easier to control. Okay, cool. Um, I think that's kind of it. Like it's pretty basic. I mean, getting good audio on zoom is not a hard thing, but there's definitely ways to get a better audio and hopefully we've been able to help out today. Um, I'm just checking out the comments here. We've got lots of, how come I can't hear you? Oh, it's cause I'm watching you on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that was certainly, too. um, yeah. I see lots of chat here on YouTube. It looks like people are kind of taking care of each other here, which is great. Um, <laughs> Danny's commenting saying, uh, in regards to the video on zoom, it says, if you're sharing your screen, not only is it slow frame rates, but it's also horrible resolution. I am inclined to agree with you there for the most part, it tends to be a lot lower in terms of what you'd actually like. Um, but we can cover video settings yeah. on a, on a later episode. That's right. So I guess it's probably time to wrap this up. Um, I've had probably a good time, best. Matt. I always have, have a good time doing a show with you and, um, uh, we're going to be back here next week uh, with uh, a special guest on the show. And we're going to be talking about four levels of redundancy. So we're talking about yeah. a live video situation when you really can't miss. And we have someone who's done some really, really high profile events talking about all the things that he does to make sure that his streams never go down. Or if they do, they get recovered. And if that stream goes down, it gets recovered. So redundancy, that's kind of our big topic next week. Uh, yeah. Three o'clock right here on YouTube. Um, and we are throwing up a lot more content as well. Uh, so we encourage you guys to check out our webinars, uh, epifan.com slash webinars. Uh, we've got them almost weekly at this point. Uh, so if you guys are curious to know a little bit more, please go to epifan.com slash webinars. We've had a lot that have happened in the past. You can just quickly sign up and watch those converted VODs at any point in time uh, to get a bit more information. Uh, otherwise, if you have questions, you can email us at info at epifan.com or jump onto our contact us page. Okay. That's it, Matt. We're done. Follow us on social medias. Give us that like, give us that subscribe until next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thanks, Matt. See you later.